Well, for a little more analysis on this story, I'm very pleased to be joined now on the line by Paul Melly. He's a fellow at the Africa programme at Chatham House in London. Uh, Mr Melly, thanks for your time. First of all, how important do you think it is for Burkina Faso that this trial is finally taking place 30 years after Sankara was killed? I think it's a really fundamental um, sort of ceiling of a chance to really explore and come to terms with the reality of what actually happened. Because after Sankara was killed, as you've explained, Blaise Compaoré, his close companion in arms, then became president and ruled for 27 years. And during those long 27 years, no serious inquiry into Sankara's death and the circumstances surrounding it was ever allowed. And so nobody, as it were, publicly assumed responsibility or explained what had happened. Uh, the, the regime was nominally a sort of continuation of the Sankara regime, but gradually moved away from its radical rhetoric. And yet at the same time, it didn't say we have deposed or overthrown Sankara for any reason. So for the Burkina people, it's really important that the truth about this basic historical event um, is revealed and and people are called to account for, for Burkina Bay, for the health of the country's democracy, if you like, going forward. People need this sort of coming to terms, if you like, with past history. Well, lawyers for the defendants are saying that actually this is really just a sham trial. Is there any reason to fear, do you think, that these 14 men won't actually get a fair hearing? Um, these days, since um, Blaise Compaoré was overthrown in a people power uprising in 2014, Burkina Faso has established uh, a pretty well-functioning democracy with fairly transparent elections, uh, pretty accountable institutions. And, um, of course, the lawyers may have technical sort of legal objections to various aspects of the case, but it seems broadly the conditions for a fair trial are there. And the investigation has been painstaking. This whole process has been going on for a number of years. It isn't a trial that's been rushed through. And there are two important people who are on trial but are being tried in absentia because they're not there. Blaise Compaoré himself, he now lives in exile in Côte d'Ivoire, a neighbouring country, uh, but is not returning for the trial. And uh, the man who is accused of having actually commanded the group of soldiers who killed Sankara and uh, his companions and who is still on the run. So um, it seems reasonable that there will be a sort of fair accounting of this process and Burkina Faso has already held one trial of really real important political significance because there was one of the accused who's on trial today, General Diendere, has already been convicted of attempting a comeback coup in 2015. So that trial's already taken place. Uh, just finally and briefly, if you can, Mr. Mele, um, we know it's been three decades since Sankara was killed, but nonetheless, he remains a revered figure today in Burkina Faso, but also in other parts of Africa. How would you um, explain why he remains such a sort of powerful figure for people? Well, I think more widely in Africa, he, it's, it's a bit like the image of Che Guevara in Latin America. He's a sort of mythical revolutionary figure. But within Burkina Faso, his legacy is much, much more profound and fund fundamental. He really established the principle of grassroots basic services, uh, women's health, uh, helping farm peasant farmers improve their land, really focused on pragmatic, down-to-earth development measures. And that's had a big influence, actually, more generally on development strategy. It, it was really one of the governments that really pioneered a grassroots approach that was then, to some extent, actually taken up by international organizations like the IMF, like the World Bank, the African Development Bank. And many of those basic development principles that he developed are now the norm, wide, widespread, if you like, across West Africa. So for people in Burkina Faso, that's his legacy, really. He established in what is one of the world's poorest countries in the Sahel, close to the edge of the Sahara, 
a basic development model which lasts till today. And his personal charisma and aura, of course, adds to that. Paul Belly, first there from Chatham House in London. Uh, thank you very much indeed for your analysis and for your time today on France 24. Thank you. Next, uh, more than 1.5.